Hello, welcome back to my floss tube channel. My name is Phoebe. This is Moonshine Stitchery, and this is going to be my well, I'm filming this on the last day of 2023, but I suppose this is going to come out um, at the beginning of 2024. But this is my regular two week update video for my floss tube channel. If you're new to floss tube, if you ever see that word on YouTube, basically it's like book tube is for books. Floss tube is for anything that is like handcrafted items that involves floss. My floss tube channel mainly revolves around cross stitch and occasionally crochet. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. Everything that I stitched on in the last two weeks as far as my cross stitch projects. So I do have a couple finishes. I actually have three finishes. Two are little. One is medium that I'm excited to share with you. They're all Christmassy. So I'm going to talk about finishes first and then I'm going to get into my whips. I have a lot of whips because yesterday or today when I'm filming this, I'm taking my 12 o'clock hour of my 12 by 12 to film and then I'm headed off to church. But um, I'm doing 12 by 12 this year. This is my first year doing it and what 12 by 12 is, is you do, well some people stitch on 12 already current whips for 12 different hours of New Year's Eve. Mine are all new starts, like pseudo new starts. So for example, the second hour, I started the second square of Halloween at Hawker and Hollow. So it's not starting a whole new project, but a number of my starts for 12 by 12 are continuing already current series. Or like I think of Halloween at Hawker and Hollow as 12 different mini projects because the first square was a full coverage and took me over a year to get done. So anyway, um, I, like I said, I have a lot of whips because I have those 12 that I'm going to share with you as well. So there's a bunch of little starts in there, but I'm going to just include them in my whips because why not? So let's go ahead and look at the stitching. So my first finish is this one here. This is Stacy Nash Primitives Deck the Coop. And I was thinking that I stitched this on 36 count, but this might be 32 count. I feel like this finished really largely. Um, I don't have my measuring tape in front of me. And I'm really sorry, nothing is ironed today. I just realized that as I sat down just now, but it doesn't feel like a vacation if I'm getting on my iron. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually iron <laughs> anything. Um, so yeah, on my vacation, I got a lot of stitching done and I wasn't anticipating to finish on this. However, I'm really happy to have it finished up. I really, really enjoyed every moment of stitching this. Even the borders are different on all four sides if you technically wanna call that a border down there. And it's just a lot of fun, different things to play with as you stitch. So this is on, like I said, either a 32 or 36 count. And this is over dyed by me. As you can see, it's kind of like a rosy mauve color. And this is using the called for over dyed flosses. And I did one strand over two, which is my preferred. Even on 32 count, I prefer that. So I don't know why I ever start anything on Ada using two strands, but I still did what you'll see coming up later in the video. I just don't like it as much. I don't know why I did that. So maybe I will actually pull out what I did, one of my 12 by 12 starts and start over with just one strand. It's just so much better. I like it so much because nothing gets tangled, it seems like. So anyway, um, that's everything for this one. There's just a tiny bit of um, long stitches here and there are some Algerian eyelets, which I think I did like the fake kind where you just do the four different stitches rather than all the way through. And after I put all of her skin in, I wished that I had picked a different skin tone because she looks rather ghostly since the skin is literally the same color as this. But I still really did enjoy it and I am super excited to have it up. And I don't mind, I mean, I don't think it looks so Christmassy that I couldn't just have it up for the winter time. So if I manage to get this framed or finished, she's gonna go up. My next two finishes are these two ornaments from um, Jan Hicks Creates, her series Vintage Christmas Alphabet. 
And if you would like to see these fully finished, I saw on Sarah's Stitchy Spots most recent video, she has these exact ones done. We were just stitching the same exact thing this last couple weeks, Sarah, but she has it finished with the cording like, like it's showing on the pattern. Here are the flosses that I used. I just um, pulled three flosses from Stash, a red, green, and gold, and they are all, um, well, let me tell you what they are just in case you wanna use these exact ones. They are Gloriana Autumn Gold, and then Classic Colorworks Tulip, the Belle Soie, and MPI 358. So if you want to get that exact look that I got, those are what I used. But that's the fun thing too about variegated floss is nothing's gonna ever look exactly, exactly because of the variegation. So anyway, these are really, really fun. I pulled this back out, not having hardly any of this done, I think, and finished this up and directly moved right along to B is for Belle and she finished up really quickly too. So I just really, really love them. I'm gonna stitch all of them on this piece of fabric. Actually, are they all gonna fit? Yeah, they should fit. Cause I should be able to get one, two, three, four, five, six, 12, 24. Oh, it's gonna be close. It'll be close. So anyway, this is a piece of 40 count that I over dyed. And so it looks like this. It's probably started out as like a piece of platinum or alabaster's Weigart, and I just added a little bit of rosy brown tones to it. So anyway, those are my next two finishes. No fully finishes today, but I, like I said, I was able to get a lot of stitchy time in the last week, um, last two weeks, but mostly this last week when the kids were out of school and I didn't have a full, full house. I had a little bit more stitchy time. Before I get too far into the video and forget to tell you what's on my nails, this is Moonshine Manny Mandragora. This is a polish that's coming exclusively to this weekend's Polish Pickup event, and that's at Polish Pick polishpickup.com. I'll put it in the description box below, but it is a community event that I participate once a month and there's always a specific theme. This month's theme is Deadly Plants, and so I chose the Mandrake group from Harry Potter. I'll put my inspo image up here on the screen. But anyway, so this is a really um, strong gold shimmer and this is just one coat. So this is what it looks like if you just want that really beautiful softer gold kiss of color. And it just looks really striking on the nail and a little bit softer this way. And now I'm gonna show you a picture of what it would look like if you did two coats. So you can see how this builds up, but I just think it's a really, really fun color and it has so much good shimmer in there and I just love a gold so that's a couple different ways you could wear this polish it's going to be available exclusively this Friday through Monday so if you like it definitely put a little um alarm set so you can go check it out all right besides my 12 for 12 starts 12 by 12 starts and besides B is for Belle I did have another start and this is a vintage Christmas tree like art deco design I'll put up on the screen what it is called and um the finished design it's a pdf and um, for this one, I don't think I actually had any of the call for flosses. So I actually, except for DMC 310. So I actually pulled these four other ones. It just needed a bright white. I ended up using 3865. And then it needs like a tan. And then these two shades of gold. But my tan is also very golden. So I just used their DMC chart and picked some stuff that I already had that was similar. But I didn't want to do over dyed because of the look of this Art Deco. Like it's meant to look like very geometric and like particular with the colors exactly where the placement is. So I don't want to mess with that. I wanted to get that um, look exactly how the designer had intended. So this is a piece of 28 count that I over dyed and it's a Lugana. And so it just has a little bit of bluey gray in here and then some of these same brownie, like a little bit golden browns. And it is stitching up nicely. As you can see, I'm using two strands. I'm going kind of against the grain with this one because I think it does need to be just like a really um, strong effect with the coverage and not be primitive. So, but I think it's really fun. It totally reminds me of Carolyn Manning which as you know is Tim, my husband's favorite designer. 
I really like Carolyn Manning too, but he loves when I'm watching floss tube and I'm like, oh babe, look at this beautiful design that when one of you are stitching on something and I'd be like, oh, that's good. That's no Carolyn Manning though. <laughs> he just loves it. He thinks it's so funny. So anyway, that is my little start on that. I actually did not end up stitching Christmas on Christmas. All of these Christmas things were stitched before Christmas. So that is my other new start. Okay, my two strands a day stitching. I got so close to a finish on this one here. Jenny Bean's Christmas, um, Jenny Bean's Christmas Sampler from Shakespeare's Peddler. I should have made a working copy of this. <laughs> Getting this out every single day for the whole month. Um, but I didn't. Anyway, I'm using Vintage Country Mocha 40 count. I'm using the called for over dyed flosses with the exception of Gentle Arts Rose Garden is this red here along the side and it goes, it's this one too for the house. I didn't have that one or couldn't find it at the time. So instead I'm using Red Rocks from Weeks. Everything else is called for. So I got so close to a finish. I love the two strands a day. Um, but in keeping with how I've been doing it, this is going to go back into my whip pile and I'm going to be choosing a new two strands a day for the month of January. So we're going to say so long to this guy for a little bit. Let me pull in. I just love it so much. It's so fun, so sweet. And there's again, lots of stuff to stitch on and enjoy in here. And we have, this as actually the trickiest part of it, in my opinion, is these leaves here. Um, but it's so nice and then you have multiple borders and they don't last they don't stay for very long like they're just smaller so then we have the whole alphabet along the bottom which i will get to soon and then the alphabet throughout the piece so i really love it if you've never if you haven't started a shakespeare's peddler yet i definitely recommend Here's this is like, I think the first thing that I stitched here. And this one's actually not so big. My kids are having so much fun. They're playing Nintendo in the room outside my office. This is only 149 by 116. So I feel like I probably should have been able to get this done two strands a day for the month of December, but that's okay. It's about the process for me. So I'm just really enjoying it as it goes along. And so I'm using one strand over two, call for flosses, 40 count vintage country mocha, Current is like my favorite floss lately. This red with a beautiful variegation and the really dark like plummy red in there. So pretty. So now it's time for me to pick a new two threads day and I haven't chosen yet because today I was still working on my 12 by 12. It bled into the 1st of January. So um, yeah, I'm gonna pick for tomorrow. So I only have two other whips because I was working on the projects that became finishes. There we go. So um, the first of which is Pumpkin House from Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery. And I love this so much. It uses a number of colors that I don't use in a lot of the other patterns. Actually, that that's reminding me, half of these are called for, half of them are what I had in stash. So anyway, this is, Number one in a series, another pattern that I really needed to make a working copy of, um, but all nine of the charts should fit on this piece of fabric here. As you can tell guys, my voice is still not back to normal. It's been two weeks since my last video. I barely made it through talking through that video and it's been two weeks, so it's like, come on already. So this is a really um, like dirty, purpley, rosy kind of, uh, fabric. And it also has like a big old dirt track stain looking intentional, um, piece there. So we'll see how I like that as it goes along. But my plan is to put all nine on here together. So I didn't get a ton done on this, to be honest. Um, I was, trying to book it and get that other stuff done. So I think I only stitched on this for, you know, a part of a day when I was also making, you know, Christmas treats or New Year's Eve treats or something. So I think I put in a few more letters up here and then I added some more to the back of this house and these pumpkins in here and then all this stemming. But 
you know, not, not too much work done on this, but I could get this one done pretty quickly because it is a rather small stitch count and I just love it. I love it. It's so, so cute, especially on 40 count. All right, one more whip. This is my last whip and you may be thinking to yourself, but wait, what about how you drew two random projects last time and the other one was Louisa Barney from Reflet de Soie? Yeah, I didn't actually get to that, which was a disappointment, but maybe I'll make it my two strands. Ooh, maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should make that my two strands a day in January. That sounds like a good plan since I didn't actually get to it. So this is um, my September 30th piece, which is um, Blackberry House by Plum Street. September 30th is my daughter's, one of my daughter's birthdays. She picked this one for me to start on her birthday this year. And so I stitch on it every 30th of the month. And all I did on this time was put in this and put in these birds and this berry. That's all. That's all the stitching time that I had that day. So I just love this so much. I love Plum Street. This Plum Street pattern has such beautiful hues of blue, green, and then these mauvey purples and oh, plummy reds. So, so beautiful. So this is gonna be, this is the outlining of the house, it looks like, yeah. So I gotta fill in a bunch of that house there. What color is that gonna be? That's gonna be so pretty. That is amethyst. Ooh, that's gonna be so, so beautiful. So they are dental arts. Actually, there's Gentle Arts and Classic Color Works in here. And this one is using all the called for. Again, you see Current here. My new fave. It's not actually new. If you've been watching my past four or five videos, you know I love that, that thread. So anyway, this is stitched on a piece of Fabric and Flare, Fabric Flare um, Dried Petal. And it's a 40 count. And so I'm doing one strand over two. And you will see this again in two weeks because it's going to come out on January 30th. So that is my last whip. So I'm going to be going through my New Year's Eve 12 by 12 starts. And so I'm guessing if you don't like that, you probably aren't watching this video since it's in the title. These next 12 things I'm going to show you are all new starts. They are all projects that I started today and yesterday on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day because honestly, I could not fit more than five starts into New Year's Eve. I was busy making snacks and busy playing with the kids and all kinds of stuff and it was like impossible to actually stitch consistently hour after hour. Um, but that means I have 12 tiny little starts to add to my whip basket, which is really fun. They're all things that I've been meaning to start for a while. So this first one I cannot pronounce, um, but it is Moniker Dutch Beauty. It's by Perman, and I will put it on... Um, I, I'll have everything linked in the description bar below. You can get this at 123 Cross Stitch, which it says it's on sale right now for $12.59. And this is a huge pattern. I have this on a giant fat half, which I've over dyed, and it's a huge, beautiful pattern. My favorite thing is the lady with the giant bell skirt, and there's so much, there's so much goodness in this pattern. I'm so, so excited for it. And it was just kind of like daunting to finally start it but I'm very happy that I finally did. So I'm not using the called for flosses. I decided to pull from some over dyed flosses and it's a whole kind of mix. There's some things that I've over dyed. I have some weeks in here, some classic color works, gentle arts. Um, there's some thread works. There is, um, like I said, some things that I've dyed. There's just like a whole mix, but really beautiful colors for this huge sampler. There's like like three or four skeins called for of a couple of different things. So I'll have to figure that out when I get there. But I do have recipes for my own flosses, so that should be fine. Um, so yeah, that's my tiny little start. Most of my starts are gonna be top left starts. So I've started in on this first tiny little windmill and the border, and that's as much as I could get done in the hour that I planned to work on this one. This is a 40 count fabric. 
and it has um, modeling that is going kind of like tealy gray through here and then the base of this I dyed it kind of like a slightly rosy tan for the sake of time and viewing space you know I usually just put the image up on the screen for you um this is something I've been waiting to start for over a year and just never did I don't know why this is Riley Harbor from Kathy Barrick and this made it into my 12 by 12 because I think I saw Nicole C share this on a couple of floss tubes in the last few months and it's just so beautiful um uh, she's not the only person stitching on it that's just who I think that I remember seeing it on recently I have I have measured this fat eighth so many times to make sure that it's gonna fit on there this is 40 count um it started out as flax by Zweigart you can see the little sticker there um and then I over dyed it with kind of some a bruised gray kind of shade there and then some bruised olive in here so it's a really fun coloration and I've just started on that first house and that's all I was able to get done in the first hour oh and that Riley's Harbor is using the called for DMC so this next one is my next heirloom piece so a few weeks ago you saw that I finished the piece for my grandma Dorothy Lee and so now I've started the piece for my paternal grandma, Leona Bartlett, and she, um, I'm going to be stitching Leona's sewing box by Blackbird Designs, but I'm going to be stitching it monochromatically. The floss that I've chosen is in the burgundy from Silken Colors, and it is, has beautiful variegation, lots of rich, deep red. So I probably got the most stitching done on this out of everything because I didn't ever have to change my floss, so... Again, this is, actually I think this one is a 36 count and it's over dyed by myself. We have like some soft clay modeling on there and I believe this probably started out as um, cream. So, yeah. And I'm gonna use one strand over two. Okay, my next new start is, can you tell from this? Can you tell? <laughs> this is a peacock, a unicorn, a badger from the Scarlet Letter. And I dyed this material specifically for this so that I wouldn't need to make it a full coverage stitching project. Again, I've been waiting so long to start this one. Let me back out so you can see the fabric here. This is um, a fat quarter and it does it is going to fit fit I measured everything over again so we have this really beautiful rich rich green shade and I'm super pumped about it and these colors I'm using the call for DMC and the colors are so rich and vibrant and I'm just gonna love every second of it so yay this is all I got done in my one hour but if you've been watching a lot of people's 12 by 12 videos then you are probably used to these teeny tiny starts so i'm using one over two on 40 count with the dmc so for this next new start um this is just a new start of a block on my halloween at hawk run hollow i'm going up so i'm going into the into the square up here so I'll put that up closer on the screen so you can see the full just that square um, I'm looking forward to having a block that is not going to be full coverage like this one down here was full coverage took me a whole year <laughs> to actually get this done just be I mean I'm not a monogamous stitcher so whenever I pull it out I wouldn't actually get that much progress but it got finished like a couple months ago and on my one hour of stitching for this hour, I was able to almost complete this whole border of this first block. So, yes, um, this is stitched on 40 count flax, just plain. I didn't over dye it or anything, although this is a project that I started back when I first started my floss tube channel. And at this point, I would have over dyed this because there are blocks that are not going to be full coverage. But these are the things you learn as you go and that's okay so that was my next hour my next start is another continuation of a series so these are my prairie schooler santas and so i decided to start 2019 right here i got a massive amount done so i started getting his boot let's see here 
I've got this sheep's little leg in there, the two little legs, and I started it on the boot and his pants. So that's how much I got done in an hour. Woo woo, woo woo. Um, this is Schoolhouse Red by Gentle Arts. Almost everything else is the call for DMC. It's just that I'm pulling in some fun reds for if it calls for one or two reds in the pattern that I'll pull in. So that schoolhouse red finished out there and here too. And then the flowers in here, I used a deeper red. This is 40 Count Stormy Night from Zweigart, just as it is printed, kind of like vintage country mocha. And I'm using one straight over too. My next start is the Scarlet House Jane Cowie. I am also so excited about this one. I'm using all of the called for MPIs, which are just so rich and lush and just divine. So these were already floss dropped and ready to go. So this one was a good one. I could just hop right into it. I did, of course, spend a little time remeasuring my fabric just to make sure. This, I believe, is a 38 count and it's over dyed by me. It has this kind of gray teal, like barely teal. So teal would be the undertone. Um, usually when I mention a shade that I'm dyeing my fabrics, it's not the neutral shade. That's the undertone of whatever neutral I'm putting on something. So I think it's gonna go really nicely with these colors because we do have like a little bit of tealy gray in there and some green and I think it's gonna be super yummy. So again, start in the top right hand corner using one strand over two of these really buttery soft plump MPIs and I love them. This definitely was a project that I was wishing I wasn't just spending one hour on. So this is Jane Cowie from The Scarlet House. This next new start is Birds of a Feather Happy Heart Sampler. I am borrowing this pattern from a friend. And this is how much I got done, which actually feels like a lot. I think this was my very first start. And maybe I was like ultra prepared to start that hour and then stitch for the whole hour because this is what I got done. So I am not using the call for flosses. I decided to pull all um, flosses from my stash. So it's a mix of things here, like always. There's some silks in there. There's some cottage garden threads, dinky dyes. Is, this one's gonna be really cool. And the hand that I started with is this Threadworks 01034. So, um, yeah. And the, let's see, this red that I put in is Threadworks 01042. So I am super pumped to have started this one. And so, yes, this is, I believe, a 32 count, and I decided to do it one strand over two because I want it to be on the prim side. And so this is just a piece of Zweigart that I over dyed. It has um, this lovely kind of gray overcast to the whole thing, and then it has some larger bits of modeling in there. So it's going to be really lovely. Maybe I should make this my two strands a day for January. Since I'm borrowing the pattern, that would be smart. We are still going. So next is my new start on a new anniversary piece for myself and my husband. And this is Pretty Little London from Satsuma Street. I recently finished my Pretty Little Hawaii piece. So I picked a piece of 14 count Ada that's the same um, size as the first one that I did, but I picked this kind of gray modeling this time um, because it's London and I thought that, that would be fitting. So I'm using the Call for DMC with this. Here are all the flosses. I'm keeping them long so I can do the loop start method. And I did have to floss drop half of this during that hour. And I'm doing two strands over one to be in keeping with the other one that it's going to be a sister to. And the flosses are really fun and totally different from the last one. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to having them hanging side by side. And so this will be coming out every 10th of the month. This was actually my last start of 12 by 12. I finished it up tonight before I'm filming this portion of the video on January 1st. And this is Abby Rose Designs for Where Your Treasure Is. I'm gonna be stitching this using the call for flosses. I'm gonna do two over one on this 32 count vintage smoky white Belfast linen from Zweigart. So it's already 
pre-printed for me with this kind of oatmeal modeling, an oatmeal version of Vintage Country Mocha. And this is what I got done, which I feel like was a fair amount for my final hour. So we've got Oscar and Olive by Weeks in here, and then we've got Baked Apple from Weeks. So it's all the called for, and I think it's gonna be just precious. And I'm excited to have finally started an Abbey Rose Designs. Okay, can you figure out what this is? I bet you all know exactly what pattern this is. <laughs> just kidding. This is this girl. Um, Elizabeth Weston, I'm gonna, instead of zooming out, just pop a picture up on the screen. So, I have also been waiting so long to start this. I only had, like, 10 of the called for MPIs, and there's, like, 25 of them. Um, so, I was not prepared. You are not prepared. Um... So I only started in on that top flower. I didn't have any of the correct greens, even though I already had a number of greens. I thought that I got the ones for, to start this in the top right corner, but no. So this is MPI 947. That's all I got done. I feel like it kind of looks like a fallopian tube, which is cool. Um, and I'm stitching this. Yes, I said MPIs, so that's making it super, super lovely, but I was not prepared on this one and I've had I feel like I've had this kitted up and wanting to go for such a long time and how silly of me to not even have the right greens to start the border so this is again another huge sampler start this is a big piece of 40 count that I over dyed with I you probably can't tell because for some reason um, the colors don't always show up true. Maybe when I have a white next to it, you'll be able to see. But this is gray, but it's definitely purple, like an indigo leaning gray. So I dyed the whole thing that shade, and then um, you can see peaks of like what the original color was, but then I also dirtied it up a little bit. So there's a whole bunch of fun going on in this piece. It's gonna be huge. And I got so much done in one hour. I'm just like shocked. Um, so yeah, 40 counts. I'm gonna stitch one over two. I think this is the less intense side of the fabric. So yeah, it's gonna be super fun. So that is my second to last start. Let me show you my last one. So my final start is the swans from Cottage Garden Samplings. Can you tell? I started in the middle with this piece because I had pre-cut a number of pieces out for the winter um, patterns in this series from this piece of coat of, dub, coat of doves from Atomic Ranch Fabrics. This is an 18 count Ada and then they over dye it and it becomes so tight that this feels more like a 20 count. And this is the one that I was talking about maybe going and switching it to just one strand because you guys remember with the fox, you heard me talking about how the stitching on this was just not easy. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that this is two strands. So um, when this comes out again, I think I'm going to put in a full strand of floss with just one and see how I like it. Um, I would like for them to match since they're in a series together, but I want the stitching to be enjoyable as well. So this is all I got done in my one hour. I'm also not using the called for. Um... The pattern calls for two of these gentle arts, which I did have, chalk and Grecian gold, and then everything else is just another um, mishmash. It's a moonshine stitchery mishmash. So there's even a Vicky Clayton silks in here, which feels so nice. A couple of Brandy silks from Be Stitch Me. So much good stuff in here to stitch with. So this is my final start on my 12 by 12 2024 2023 new year's eve going into 2024 and there was no rhyme or reason to why i pulled out what i did i just grabbed stuff from my basket and that my friend is the end of my starts slash whips so i hope you had a really great new year's eve if you participated in 12 by 12 i would love for you to tell me some of the projects that you stitched on or started in the comments down below and I really appreciate you joining me here on my floss tube. Thank you to my returning subscribers. Thank you to those who are new to my channel. I, I guess I probably haven't said in a little while, I am a mother of four. I have a college student and I have a second grader. That's the span of my children. 
we live in Utah, kind of out in the country, and um, my husband is a project manager. I am a stay-at-home mom. I have two boys, two girls, and when I'm not with my kiddos, I'm working on my brand, Moonshine Manny. It's a nail polish brand. It's handmade artisan nail lacquer with over 10 free, that means free of 10 of the not so great ingredients that mainstream brands have or do use, have used in the past or some still currently do use. So it's a little bit better for you. Plus you're getting my artistic take on what I think you might have fun wearing on your nails. So that's a little bit about me. We had a very great calm New Year's Eve. I did make a lot of the goodies that I love to make for New Year's Eve. I'll pop in a little video here. We, uh, my mom is a really fun person and when she wasn't having migraines and I was growing up, she loved to have parties and get togethers and our biggest one was always New Year's Eve. We always got to have friends over and she, we grew up very humbly, but on New Year's Eve we'd have a party and everybody got to pick their favorite treats and she would make stuff and buy stuff and we would just stay up all night and have a silly, silly fun time. And there were a lot of kids in my family and so there was a lot of people crammed in one tiny little house full of love and goodies. So I perpetuate that tradition and on New Year's Eve we have lots of fun goodies and we stay up and play games and have a silly time. And this year I included 12 by 12 so that made it extra fun for me. So um, yeah, that was my New Year's Eve. That's everything that you saw me stitching on. I do have a little bit of haul, so I'm gonna go ahead and share that with you. Haul just means things that I shopped for in the last couple weeks that came in that have anything to do with cross stitch. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I feel like a bunch of places had pretty awesome sales the last couple weeks of the year, and there's still a few things that are coming to me. So I'll list down below where I shopped for stuff, but I think it might be a lot like all mixed together at this point. Um, so I just grabbed stuff when it was on sale. Somebody was having a spring sale, so I got some spring patterns. We have Layla's Studio, and this is Seasons Spring, and it just looks so cute and sweet, and I really need to remember to finish a pillow this way sometime and add that extra fabric on the bottom. Then we have Summer House Stitch Work Spring Awakens. And I think this is why I ended up going to that website in the first place was to grab the Tree of Life Sampler by Brenda Gervais. It is so beautiful and I just had to have it so I went searching for it immediately. And I don't know if this was at the same place but I also happened to snag this. Oh no, I think I got this at 123Stitch. I just randomly threw it into cart because it was cute. So, this is Lone Elm Lane Early Woodwares and Designs. I'm trying to read that upside down. Little Brown Sparrows. I could have a whole sparrow wall. This one I also had in my 123 um, cart for a long time, I feel like. And this is Caroline Amelia Trowell. Again, from Brenda Gervais. Such a fun sampler. And I either picked this up from Top Knot or from 123 Stitch, I can't remember, but I'm very, very excited about this year's um, series from Cottage Garden Samplings. I don't so much care for snowmen, so I think I only picked up one from last year's series, but I'm sure I will get all of them from this year. And I almost started this in my 12 by 12. And now that I'm saying that out loud, I'm pretty sure I shared this in the last video. Whoops. This one just popped in. I think somebody was having a Christmas sale right after Christmas. So this is a Christmas heart by the Calico Confectionery. And I just love the gothic look and the beautiful phrase from Charles Dickens. Okay, one, two, three stitch was having their hats patterns on sale. So I grabbed three. This is Ann Roberts. And the colors are what really grabbed me and the fact that besides the border, like nothing is repetitive in this. And it's also like on the smaller side for a hat sampler. I thought that was really beautiful. This really reminded me of Jane Cowie, just these really rich red oranges. And we've got the navy blue in there. Oh, so good. 
Then I picked up Mary Ann diaper. I'm gonna call her the Dipes. This is 1826. I've had too many babies in my life, I guess. You know, my youngest is eight, so I haven't had a baby in a while, but the fact that her last name is Diaper is just rad. I wonder how she actually pronounced it. So, this is beautiful. It was so hard to force myself to just pick three on that sale, but I did. Look at these lovely colors on the outside. Such a fun spring stitch. And then I got this one. Every time I see someone stitching on this, I'm just totally enchanted by this bee skep. It just looks so awesome. And I just feel like as far as reproduction samplers, there's not a lot that have like a big piece like this. Well, there are some, but that is that detailed looking with the shading and everything. You know, I think things usually look a little bit more two dimensional. Anyway, this one is symmetrical, which is not maybe my preference, but I just can't get over that. The whole design is so beautiful. So I couldn't not bring it home. Okay, so uh, we're gonna have a little giveaway right now because this, I purchased the rest in the series of Vintage Christmas Alphabet from Jan Hicks, but I already had P and Q. Mind the fact that you picked up P and Q before, self. Anyway, so that gives me the opportunity to give this pattern away. I would love to send it to one of you. Just um, put the word peace in your comment today and I will pick one of you at random and announce it in my next video. So um, yes, good luck. And it's kind of random giving you a pattern in the very middle of a series, but hey, maybe you're collecting them like I am and would enjoy adding this to your stash. So I got P and Q, R and S. I actually have a spreadsheet so that I don't repurchase things, but if I forget to add something, then it messes me up. V and W and XYZ. And then wherever was having, somebody was having a sale on, it might've been Top Knot, it might've been Fat Quarter Shop, having a sale on Jan Hicks. So I also grabbed her new release, Colors of Mexico, which is just divine. And I saw this and I watched her whole video where she was talking about it and I was like, oh, I love it so much, but I'm not gonna get it. It's such a big project and, you know, I'm already, I've already started so many things. Um, and then someone had a sale and I said, what the hey? So it came home with me. And then very last, I also got this in that sale and I'd never seen this pattern before. Sorry for the glare. And it's just called mystery. And it's very cool. It reminds me of the artsy housewife and I really, really like it. So yeah, super digging that one. All right, so last up, all we have left really is plans. And now that my like Christmas stitching is over, um, it's not really that I don't want to stitch winter anymore. I'm still definitely feeling winter here. In fact, we only really had like two days of snow so far since Halloween, I feel like is one of the earliest times that we usually have snow around here. But we've only had two days of snow. So I'm sure we have lots of winter coming for us still. So I'll still want to stitch some winter, but specifically like Christmas stitching, I'm not really going to be thinking about that. So I'm probably going to be stitching more of a variety throughout my whips, which means pulling from my whip wheel. I use the Tiny Decisions app on my phone to help me pick an app, pick an app to help me pick a project when I can't like, when I don't just know what I want to stitch on at that time. So um, I do have my 4th of July stitching coming up on the 4th. It's salute to Abigail and I'm so, so close to finish. So I don't know, maybe this is the month. Maybe this is the month I'll get the finish. And then I did start my next anniversary piece, which I stitch on on the 10th of the month. I started that on my 12 by 12. So I have that to stitch on again coming up on the 10th. These are all the things that I'm gonna stitch on before the next time you see me on here. On the 7th, I stitch on my birthday project, which is Vintage Stitches by Jeanette Douglas. And then I'm gonna be choosing a couple random projects to stitch from my, um, my two randomizers. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So I mentioned previously about some of the stitching you're going to see in the next video. Um, and then that I would pick a random, two random projects with you from my apps. So the first one we're going to pick is from my 2023 Mania. I need to see if I can get some more of these finished before um, Mania comes up again this year. All right, so these are all my Mania starts. And I just or my projects, some of them were carryover. I finished that one, so that gets crossed off. So now I'm going to randomly draw a number between one and 23. And if it comes up and it's um, something I already finished, I will re-spin like Be Thankful. So let's re-spin, 15. Hello Halloween, okay. So I'm gonna work on Hello Halloween. This one is, I get my different Halloween starts Confused. I think this is the one with the skeletons, the Sue Hillis design. This has not come out in a while, so that'll be cool. I will work on that probably on the 13th. And then next, I'm going to draw a project from all of my whips. So this is the app called Tiny Decisions, and I've added all my whips in here. I even added the new ones from 12 by 12, so let's see what I get. Oh, that's going to be fun. It's going to be half the fun. This is um, a design from Ink Circles. And yay, that's exciting because that is also on here. So if I can get a lot of progress done on that, that would be really good. So those will be two patterns that you definitely see me get, two whips that you'll definitely see me get some progress on before the next video. All right, so now we've talked about plans. I do have a little bit of book talk to share with you. I know this is a floss tube channel, not a book tube channel, and I don't have a book tube channel, although I do have four YouTube channels. I have this one for my stitching. I have one where my husband and I talk about um, books and TV and movies, but we haven't done it since the summer because we've just been slammed with life and busy. Um, on my main channel is where I talk about nail polish, but you can also see our family's vlogs on there if you want to see more from what we're doing, just a day in the life basic kind of peeps. And then I also have a music channel where you can go listen to my piano music if you're interested. So I hope, do have a lot of um, pans in the fire so I don't have a separate book talk channel. So I have a few books that I read recently that I want to share with you. If you're not interested in that, then this is a great place to say so long. So thank you for joining me for this video. And I'll see you back in two weeks. If you would like to hear about the books that I've read, then here we go. So since my last video, I read a few more books. I read another one that's in that series, the um, Tree Tree Farm Mysteries, and it's called The Knife Before Christmas, and it was just as cute as the first one. I really liked it. Um, now that Christmas is over, I guess it's not such a big recommend for me. Before, when I started the series, I was really looking for something very festive and get me in the mood, and it definitely did that. So you're probably not looking for a Christmas recommendation now, but I really, really enjoyed it. So then, after that, I read The Second Life of Muriel West by Amanda Skinnendor. And this book, I really, really loved. So basically the gist of this is it's set in like the 1920s, I think, ish. And this woman, she's married to a movie star. She lives in Hollywood and she discovers that she has a condition on her skin and she gets sent to a leper colony. I think it's in Louisiana. And so she's just like totally thrust into completely different culture. She's also a really privileged woman. And so she's just like not willing to accept the fact that she is somebody that people look down on during the time. And it was just really interesting. I knew absolutely nothing about leprosy. And I loved the setting, the, the time that it was in, the historical time during for our country. And um, I loved that the main character was very flawed throughout pretty much the entire book and it was a great read so i definitely recommend that and it was free as an amazon member or excuse me an audible member where i get two credits a month i think even if you're just getting one credit a month you can read like a bunch of stuff for free so 
Um, Twas the Knife Before Christmas was free, and The Second Life of Muriel West was a free read. And then after that, I started a book called From Blood and Ash. I don't have a ton of opinions on this yet. It's by Jennifer L. Armand Trout because I just barely started it. I think it says I'm in chapter nine, but I still feel like none of the content of what this book is going to be about has really started yet. But basically, this woman, this young girl, she's 18 or something, she lives in this kingdom where somebody, the Dutch or the, the Duchess or the Queen or somebody has chosen, like, there's a person in their kingdom that is chosen and she's the maiden and she can't be, like, seen by anybody or touched by anybody. She can't have, like, relationships and then she's going to go to this process of ascension and it makes all these other people ascend or something and I feel like it's like um a sacrifice she's she's gonna be like the sacrificial lamb for the kingdom I don't really know though because I'm not far enough into it yet but she's rebelling against that role because she does let a few people see her and she kind of like goes out and has some adventures in town but it's really dangerous because she and her cohorts could get killed or really in trouble for doing it because she's supposed to stay, stay like totally pure of any kind of experience. So I don't really know what I think about it yet, but it was like every time I would finish a book, it, Audible kept being like, would you like to read this book? And finally I was like, okay, fine, I'll read this book. So anyway, I'm trying it. So I will let you know in my next update if I liked it or not. Oh, and before that, I did a reread of The Way of Kings from Brandon Sanderson. My friend Leilani and I are reading a lot of his books right now whenever it comes up for her for free from her library. And so it's a reread for me. It's a first time read for her, but it's great to have somebody to discuss it with. So I also read that in since the last time we talked about books, um, but I've I think I've talked about that book before. Maybe not on this channel, but I really enjoy The Way of Kings and the Stormlight Archives series from Brandon Sanderson, so that's a big recommend. All right, guys, so that's going to conclude this video. I really appreciate you joining me. I hope you had some fun. You got some good stitching in while you were watching me, or maybe you were folding laundry. Maybe you were driving. I myself have a long commute every week when I take my sons to their dad's house, so I love having great stuff to listen to. Um, but yeah, thanks for being here. I hope you subscribe if you enjoyed. I did not end up doing an end of year whip parade if you didn't notice that. My friend Kayla reminded me that my anniversary is actually in March, not May. So it doesn't really make sense for me to do a whip parade now and then in three months do a whip parade. So my whip parade will be coming in March if you're wondering because I did mention that in my last video. Okay, I think that's everything. I got a skeedaddle off to church and I will talk to you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. Okay, bye.